Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video I will attempt to explain the new corruption loot system and also talk about some of the corruption effects that are being introduced in patch 8.3. Warforging and Titanforging has been in the game in one form or another since pretty much Mist of Pandaria. So with this new system, the Warforge and Titanforge system will be completely removed, which means that if you open the dungeon journal and you check the item level of an item, then you go to the boss, kill it, and that item drops, it's guaranteed to be the same item level. So there's not going to be any more random plus 5s, plus 10s, plus 15s. The only remnant of the old system will be sockets and tertiary stats. So items can still randomly roll sockets, and you can still randomly get leech or avoidance or things like that on the certain piece. The new system being introduced is of course the corruption system, and I want to break it down into three separate pillars because it's hard to explain the system overall without breaking it into pieces. The first pillar is the detrimental effect an item can roll, which will be corruption and I will talk about it in a little bit. The second is the beneficial effect and the third is the player's corruption resistance that comes from the new legendary cloak that we get in the new patch. Every time you loot an item, it will have a chance to corrupt which means that the item will gain a detrimental effect and a beneficial one. The detrimental effect is always corruption, which will cause different nuisances to your gameplay depending on how much of this corruption you have on your character, essentially limiting how many corrupted pieces you're able to equip. There are several corruption breakpoints at which your character will gain new negative effects. The first one is grasping tendrils, which happens as soon as you have any corruption on your character. It's a fairly simple effect, causing your character to have a chance at being slowed if you take any type of damage. The severity of the slow will increase based on how much corruption you have equipped. The second effect is Eye of Corruption, which happens when your character has more than 20 corruption equipped. This effect has a chance of spawning an eye that deals damage to you as long as you're within its range and it's marked by a circle. The range and the damage of the eye will increase with the amount of corruption that you have. The third effect is Grand Delusions, which will happen above 40 Corruption. When you take damage, there is a chance that a thing from beyond, which is a small ad, will spawn and start chasing you. This ad deals a pretty large amount of damage when it hits you, so it either needs to be killed or you need to kite away from it. And its speed will increase with Corruption, so when you get to higher amounts of Corruption, it will be pretty fast and you will most likely be getting hit by it. The fourth effect is Cascading Disaster which happens at 60 corruption. This causes the thing from beyond, the ad that spawns, to also apply the first and second negative effects when it hits you. This pretty much means that you will be getting slowed, you will be getting hit by the ad, and you will be getting hit by the eye. So it's a pretty bad overlap if this happens. And the last corruption effect is Inevitable Doom, which happens above 80. And this is a static debuff that your character has that will increase your damage taken and it will reduce your healing taken. So the more corruption you have, the more damage you take, the less healing you receive. For the next pillar, let's talk about the beneficial effects. There are essentially four types of beneficial effects, which are passive stat increase, meaning that you will simply gain more of a certain stat from all sources, or in the case of leech and avoidance, you will just gain more of that secondary stat. The second one is a secondary stat proc. Think of it like a trinket that has a chance to proc haste, but in this case, it will be whatever secondary stat that corruption rolls. And the third is kind of a unique category that has uh, several effects, which I will talk about later, but basically anything varying from just dealing single target damage to dealing AOE damage, gaining more secondary stats, or gaining cooldown reduction. The last type of beneficial effects are Nihilotha weapon corruptions, and these are only present on those specific weapons from Nihilotha. There are six weapons that will always drop with these corruptions on them, and they are typically specific to a certain class. After I explain the whole system, I will also take a look at these. Whenever an item corrupts, two things will happen. It will roll a random type of beneficial effect from the ones that I explained above, and it will also roll one of three possible tiers of corruption. Each tier of corruption increases both the beneficial effect and the amount of corruption you get. To give you an idea, if you rolled a passive stat increase, uh, this item at tier 1 will have 10 corruption on it, at tier 2 it will have 15, 
and at tier 3 it will have 30 corruption. If you rolled an item that has the secondary stat proc on it, then the corruption values increase by 5 at each tier level. So they will have 15, 20, and 35 corruption on them at their respective tiers. Unique corruptions are an exception to this rule because they each have a specific value that they come with, which I will talk about later. Now the third and last pillar of the corruption system is corruption resistance. With the new patch, there will be two ways of increasing your character's corruption resistance. At the beginning of the patch, you will obtain a legendary cloak through a quest line that can be upgraded every week through the vision scenarios. This cloak will serve to increase your character's corruption resistance, allowing you to stack more corruption before gaining the detrimental effect. So as a super simple example, at level 15, your cloak will provide 50 resistance, which means that you can equip 50 corruption total before gaining any detrimental effects. Okay, so what happens if you roll a bad corruption on an item that you don't want to use, but you still want the item itself? Let's say you're a DPS player already playing at 35 corruption, which you decided that's your limit. An item drops with avoidance on it or something, but you still need the item, you just don't want to increase your corruption. Uh, you can go to Mother in the Chamber of Heart and you can cleanse the item, which will remove both the corruption and the beneficial effect from it, and just leaving the vanilla item as is. Now this is not reversible, so you need to be careful with which items you actually cleanse. If you were just interested in how this system works, that was basically the explanation. Uh, now I'm going to talk about some of the effects and what implications they actually have. Now for the passive and proc stats, it's pretty straightforward. So if you roll any of these, it will simply depend on your character's stat weights to determine if these are good for you or not. If your character loves haste and hates versatility and you roll a haste corruption, then it's probably good for you. If you ro roll a versatility corruption and you have the corruption threshold to equip it, it's probably still good for you, but not as good as haste. So for these specific scenarios, you will most likely need to check out your class discords or sims done by people during the patch. The corruptions I actually wanted to talk about are the unique ones, which can roll on any item, uh, including weapons. First one is Infinite Star, and this one comes in three corruption tiers. Uh, it will put a dot on your target that deals damage, and it can stack up to 10 times. Each stack increases the amount of damage that this specific corruption does to your target. Um, overall looking like a pretty strong trait from early sims, but there's still room for balancing, so we'll see once the patch goes live. Second one is Twilight Devastation, which is a corruption that has a chance to release a frontal beam that deals damage based on your health, and the corruption also comes in three different tiers. Next we have Twilight Appendages, which has a chance to summon a tentacle that mind flays your target. So this is a single target corruption, and it also comes in three tiers. Next on the list, we have Echoing Void, which is a corruption that builds stacks over time, then deals the damage to nearby enemies when it collapses and consumes those stacks. It also comes in three possible tiers. Then we have Gushing Wounds, which has a chance to cause your target to bleed. The effect only comes in one tier currently. Then we have Ineffable Truth, which is the first one that's kind of interesting and can have some interesting implications, especially in PvP. It causes your spell cooldown rate to increase by 50% for 10 seconds whenever it procs, and this also comes in one single tier. Then we have Void Ritual, which has a chance to increase all your secondary stats, and this happens more often if at least two players who are nearby also have it equipped. This corruption comes in three possible tiers. Now, from Nihilotha, we also have six unique weapons that I talked about earlier, which are kind of designed for specific classes. For two-handed strength classes, and I'm pretty sure here they had Blood Death Knight in mind when they designed this, but it can be used by any two-handed strength class, we have Obsidian Skin, which is a weapon effect that drops on the weapon from Mott. This weapon will increase your armor by 5%, and every 30 seconds you will deal AoE damage equal to a certain percent of your armor to nearby enemies. Then for Hunters, we have the Eldritch Bow from Skitra, which causes your auto attacks to reduce the cooldown of one of your random abilities by one second. 
Then for Pro Paladins, Pro Warriors, and Frost DKs, we have a one-handed weapon from Ratheon, which causes you to gain stacks of Searing Flame, and when you reach 30 stacks, it will deal a frontal Searing Breath that deals damage to enemies. For Brewmaster Monk, Survival Hunter, and Feral slash Guardian Druids, we have an edgy staff from Mott that has a 25% chance to deal some damage to your target and heal you for the same amount. The damage and healing are based on your max health. Then for Holy Paladins, Resto Shamans, Elemental Shamans, and Mistweaver Monks, we have the Mind Piercer Axe from Drestagath, which will constantly give you between 1 and 8% intellect. Think of it like a Dark Moon Fair card that kind of reshuffles every time it procs. And then lastly, for agility classes who use fist weapons, which is there's too many of for me to name here, we have the Unjuined Caress from Raden. This weapon will deal damage to your target, and whenever it hits them, it will also snare them by 30% for 6 seconds. Also with Annihilota, we have six other weapons that will always roll a specified unique corruption whenever you loot them. For healers, we have the one-handed mace from Zanesh that will come with Void Ritual Corruption on it at tier 3. For caster DPS, we have a wand from Ilganot that comes with the Ineffable Truth Corruption and a sword from Carapace of Nazoth which comes with the Infinite Star Corruption. For agility polearm users, we get a hive mind weapon with echoing void on it. And then for rogues, uh, especially for subtlety and assassination, you get a dagger from Carapace of Nazoth that has twisted appendage corruption. And then for two handed strength users, you get a two handed sword from Nazoth, which comes with the twilight devastation corruption attached to it. So these weapons, if you loot them, they will guaranteed have the corruption, but you can still cleanse them if you don't want to use that corruption. So what are my thoughts on this system? Overall, I think it's a little bit too much RNG, especially considering that corrupted items can still roll sockets. And even just outside of that, corrupted items that are best in slot for you are going to be very hard to obtain. There's a very low chance that you get the best corruption for your class, and you get it at the tier that it's best. So for certain corruptions, getting a tier 3 of the corruption will be best, while others maybe getting a tier 1 or tier 2 will be better, uh, because it will just depend on how much damage increase you get per point of corruption. I assume they're trying to make all these tiers basically be equal, so it doesn't really matter what tier you get them at, but at the moment, it does depend on what tier you loot these corrupted items at. So overall, a little bit too much RNG for my taste. We'll see how this actually plays out for the raid race. Um, if you guys have any questions about what specific corruption is good for your class, which corrupted effects look best so far, make sure to check out your specific class discords, um, or once the patch goes live, I'm assume, I assume websites like Blood Mallet will also have sims for your class. But this patch and this next raid tier, it will be more important than ever that you know how to sim your character because there's just way too many corrupted items way too many corrupted effects and way too many combinations for guide writers and websites to give you concrete um, suggestions on how you should be optimizing your character again thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and sub to the channel and i'll see you guys in the next one Bye bye